What's your man, AMG Train here, checking in with another video. Today, we're gonna be doing something a little bit more mechanically inclined, which involves changing the hub assembly on my 2013 E63. Make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Guys, this is about to be a fun one. So just to give you guys a little backstory about how I got the car. I purchased the car in Atlanta. I had been looking for an E63. My brakes are squeaking on the truck. And I just thought, Man, like I should get me an E63 or a CLS 63. So I looked, looked and looked and looked. I know I wanted one that had the P30 package, which is kind of like the S model from 2014 and up. I was looking for that extra horsepower. So the P30 package came with 560 horsepower, which is a lot of horsepower versus the regular package, which only came with 518 horsepower. It is hard to find a P30 package in good condition. Before I purchased the car, I ended up getting a pre-purchase inspection at Mercedes-Benz of Marietta. And yes, guys, they quoted me a bill for $14,000 to fix the things that was wrong with this vehicle. Some of these things were just straight up overboard, guys. I'm, I'm just gonna keep it straight and 100 with you. A $4,500 for a steering wheel, like, come on. One of those things on that list was the hub. You guys are gonna see me go through this list, fixing some of the things that they said needed to be fixed. And, you know, we're gonna go from there. We got a set of Vorstein wheels and Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's literally we got these for eight hundred dollars so stay tuned to go ahead and subscribe now so you can find out how we ended up getting those wheels and stuff like that so if you have an e63 cls 63 uh w12 model w218 model or yes w218 model make sure you watch this video give this video a thumbs up we're gonna try to make this as quick as possible <laughs> came in here because we needed a jack so let's look at some of these jacks oh lord have mercy this one seems like really lightweight i don't need nothing this big man might just come with this one so they didn't have the jack in stock so we're gonna have to go to another one which i don't feel like doing so i'm just gonna use the jack that came with it and i'll just visit another harbor freight uh, when i get some time Guys, I want you guys to know this right here. Don't be afraid to buy these European cars. For the longest time, I psyched myself out of buying a European car. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm gonna say this with, uh, with a huge air quote. Sometimes having these cars can be very expensive, especially if you don't know how to do a lot of this stuff by yourself. So if you go to the dealer for every single thing that happens to your car, it is gonna be an expensive nightmare for you. Being that I am, mechanically inclined you know when stuff happens in my car i choose whether i want to go to the dealership and get it fixed or not now some things if i had a blown head gasket or something like that you know i'm gonna find me an independent shop to deal with something like that if on an amg i may actually take it to the dealership to get it or somebody that specializes in amgs i mean just you know put that out there i'll preface that but something like a wheel band change, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys, man. It's super easy to do a lot of this stuff. It's stuff like that that breaks every day. It's not like your your stuff like transmissions and water pumps and stuff like that. That that stuff doesn't happen often. It's the little stuff like, like a brake change. Like to give you an example, like I said in my last video, it was only $1,300 to get the rear brake pass changed on that. And $1,300, that's a lot of money. Now, I could pay for it, but I'm not gonna spend thirteen hundred dollars. So what I did was just got some pads. I got somebody to do it, and I paid a hundred bucks for them to do it. Instant savings right there. So don't be afraid to, you know, if you want to get, you know, a CLS fifty five or an E fifty five or an AMG or something like that. Yes, yo, go ahead and get it, man. Like, don't be afraid of this stuff. Just have you some cash saved up, and I would say, you know, just go ahead and do it. We made it back to the house, but first things first, we need to get these wheels off. These are the four steiner wheels I was telling you about. So we need to get this off and uh, we'll get started. We now have the tire off. And we can look in here. We have a star bit that we have to use to get this out. Um, 
And yeah, man, look at these calipers. These are some huge calipers. This is my hand. I have a pretty big hand. So we just got to loosen up a couple of boats. We got to loosen that boat there. This boat down here. Got to loosen both of these bolts right here to get the caliper off. And um, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take the caliper off now and let's see what we got going on. So guys, we got it off finally. So if you find yourself battling this like I did, let me give you guys a tip. I didn't have a rubber mallet. I should have had a rubber mallet. If you find yourself in the same situation, I would first remove the caliper. You got these two bolts. You got a top and bottom bolt. Move the pins out of the caliper. That made it easier for me to wiggle the brake caliper so I could slide it off of the rotor. Got a bungee cord here. Once we got that, this was here. And then well, this bearing was there. And then you had the rotor sits on top of that. You can remove the rotor with a star bit. It is a T30. You have to beat the rotor so it'll come apart from the hub. This and the rotor will get stuck together. In my case, I didn't have a rubber mallet. So what I did was there's this lock nut right here. He's a uh, five and you take that off. Once you get this off, you slide the whole hub and rotor assembly out all in one piece. Then you take a hammer, put a cloth on the top of it, and then you just beat this out. That's the easiest way to do it, hands down. Now what we're about to do is we have our new hub, which is here. We're about to put it on here. We also have our factory Mercedes grease, and this is what we're gonna pack the hub assembly with, we're gonna use the whole tube or try to use the whole tube. So first things first, we need to get this off, get it cleaned up. Now I'm gonna just use something to wipe it off really good and just spray it down and get all this stuff out. You got a little grime in here. So we're gonna get all of that stuff out. Just stay tuned. So we got the hub assembly on, all right? Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put this back on. So we're gonna put this locking nut on. Now, to put this back on, there are some very specific instructions. So what you wanna do is you don't wanna over tighten this. This is only supposed to be so tight. And if I'm not mistaken, you need like a depth gauge to put this on. You don't wanna put this on too, too tight but you also don't want to put it on too loose. So you want to put this about hand tight. So I'm going to put it tight right now and I'm just going to spin it to kind of get that grease worked around. I'm going to keep tightening it up. And what you don't want is you don't want a lot of resistance on it, okay? And you should be able to feel the resistance on this thing, but you don't want it loose enough to where there's play. Loosen it up a little bit. Okay, let's tighten it up some more. And tighten it see that's too tight so I'm gonna loosen it up and then you want to back off you see that that's much easier to turn now so you want it hand tight and then back off so that's too tight you see it's a lot of resistance on that a lot of resistance so you want it hand tight and back off let's tighten this back up this is a five Okay. And you don't want to over tighten this either. Just tight enough to where you can't get it off. If you don't have a torque wrench, you really should be using a torque wrench doing, doing this right here. But this right here is fine. We got our new hub assembly on. Now it's time to start piecing this thing back together. So now what I'm going to do to keep this from sticking like it did this time is I'm going to take this and I'm going to dab a little bit of this grease on there. Now we're gonna grab the rotor and we're gonna put the rotor on. Ooh, there we go. We're lined up. I'm gonna use this tool right here to see if I can um, get this a little bit tighter. Okay, that's pretty tight. Now guys, you can see that we have no play put our dust cap back on. I like to kind of keep things a little clean. It's got a little dirt in here. So we got that. Bam. Put that back on. And what we're going to do is take our hammer and 
could be all around it. It should go in pretty easily. And I'm not beating right on the edge. I'm like literally beating to where we're not bending it. We're good. So that's good. That's back on. And um, let's get the caliber back on. So guys, um, I will say this. Difficulty level on this out of a five, this is definitely about a two. But if you don't do the research ahead of time and you just watch a video like I did thinking like, okay, I got this, you're gonna definitely make it a 304. Um, this is not a hard thing to do. This should be a quick job. If you got all the tools laying right in front of you, this should literally only take about 20 minutes tops. You got the tools. What I'm gonna do is leave a list of the tools that I'm going to be telling you guys you should have. I'll leave a list of tools that you need in the description. Yeah, let's get this caliper back on and let's get this thing back on the road and test drive it. And just like that, guys, we are all finished. Wheel back on, lug nuts or lug studs back in, brakes are back on and everything is all clean. This is super, super easy. You should be able to do this literally in like 30 minutes if you got all the tools. So like I said, I'm gonna list the tools that you need down below. Just make sure that when you're doing this, I can't stress enough to make sure that you have all the tools that are listed down below so you won't have any issues with doing this job. This should only take about 30 minutes to get the job done and you'll have a really good hub ready to rock and roll. So make sure you guys subscribe to this video and make sure you guys comment leave a like on this video if you want to see more videos like this this is amg Tran signing out and it's been real peace out